cafeteria. So I had 21 swipes per week. And food bucks are credits that allow you to spend your meal plan just like cash at outside restaurants like Starbucks or a bagel place on campus. So 21 swipes per week. I think I had the, my statistics from U.S. News says that the, the, the meal plans with the most meals had 19 per week. So you were probably up there with getting a lot of meals, and I know you're not a really big person. So what did you do with all the <laughs> extra swipes and meal bucks? I ended up, you could actually use your extra swipes on guests to come with you. So I ended up bringing a lot of people in with me for extra swipes. Um, but also UNR has a great system, though, because at the end of the year, your unused swipes um, roll into the next year's food bunk bucks. So the next, my sophomore year, I had a bunch of money to kind of use at Starbucks or to grab a snack while I was studying on campus. So that worked out really great. That's great that it wasn't a use, you, you lose, you snooze type plan. Yeah. So living in the dorms at UNR as a freshman, the cost of the room and board, including everything you really needed, utilities, cable, internet, would, was, is, today it's probably about $8,000 a year which is about the average around the country for room and board. Let's talk about your experiences living off campus in an apartment. Was this a pretty popular option for most students after a year or two in the dorms? Yeah, most of my friends moved into an apartment or house close to campus after their first year of living in the dorms. There are some dorms that cater to sophomore that are kind of sweet style living closer to an apartment life, but I was ready to get out on my own and get away from the dorms for a little bit. Um, There were a lot of options to choose from. I found an apartment on my own and moved in with three of my friends, and the apartment was actually right across the street from the dorm, so it kind of felt like you were on campus. I could still walk to my classes, but I was in my own apartment. So what did the apartment cost you per student? What were the extras that you had to pay compared to dorm living? Rent was $3.95 per month for a furnished apartment, plus about $30 a month for shared utilities. We each had our own lease with the landlord, and I only rented for the school year, so the total cost for a school year was $3,400. And did you get your own room and your own bathroom? What was the configuration for where you were living? So it was a four-bedroom, two-bath apartment, so I had my own room, but I shared a bathroom with one other girl. But it seemed like a dream compared to sharing a bathroom with 20 other girls in the dorm. So it's cheaper than a dorm room, and I guess a better experience. It sounds like it was having your own room and only two people to share your bathroom with. And you got to pick your own roommates. How did you manage the food? Did you share it with your roommates, or did everyone manage their food separately? Most of our food was done separately. We did share things like condiments or baking supplies, things that we all use that last a while. And then once a week, we kind of did a family dinner, we called it, where we each took turns cooking meals for the whole apartment. So where'd you find, how much did you find you spent on food while living in the apartment? I budgeted about $150 a month, so I spent about $1,600 for the school year, including some meals out. So that's less than the dorm. Does that sound right? Yes, but there was a few extras that came along with the apartment. Um, I had to buy pots and pans and cleaning supplies. There was a few extra things that I needed for an apartment that I didn't necessarily need in my dorm. Okay, so you... I know that you joined a sorority and you end up living in a sorority house for your third and fourth year. Tell me a little bit about the sorority scene at UNR. Why did you decide to join one? Well, UNR is not a very active Greek campus compared to a lot of the schools in California especially. There are only five sororities and about 8% of the campus is Greek. So I decided to join Kappa Alpha Theta as a freshman because I came to UNR knowing absolutely no one. There wasn't Another person from my high school that I knew of was going there, so I really wanted to get involved and find something to do. So that was kind of my basis for the decision. So how? tell me a little bit about Kappa Alpha Theta. How how big is it? How many girls belong to the sorority? So there's about 115 members, and 30 girls live in the house. Uh, You can't live until your sophomore year, and I wasn't interested in living in the house because I wanted to try apartment life before I was living in the house. So I joined, along with several of my friends that had joined Kappa Alpha Theta, we all joined um, as freshmen, but we didn't move in until our junior year. So what does it cost to join, and and kind of what extra money do you spend a year if you're a member of a sorority? Well, just dues alone, not not living in, is $900 a semester, which includes everything that you do. So all of your dances, socials, activities, service projects, everything like that, 
plus two to three meals a week cooked for you at the house so that you can come over and hang out with all of the girls. Plus, they buy a lot of clothes and T-shirts and cute stuff like that. So they bought you clothes? Is this, are these clothes you would wear outside of the sorority events or just things that you'd wear behind the closed doors of the sorority house? Oh, no, that's pretty much all I wore. They were really cute. <laughs> <laughs> so you decided to move into the sorority house during your junior third year. Oh, how, what did it cost you in terms of room and board there? Um, the room and board was about $1,800 a semester plus my $800 for dues for the semester. So that was about $360 a month versus my $525 a month in my own apartment. So for a year, living in the sorority house was about $5,200 for a total room and board versus almost $8,000 for my first year in the dorms and about $6,500 for my year in my own apartment. So you had a house mother who was taking care of you. What does a house mother do? What's that about? That sounds good. I want a house mother. <laughs> a house mother. Um, she lives in the house with us. She kind of has her own little suite with her own room and bathroom. But she does, she works with us to make a budget and plans meals. She's the direct supervisor to the housekeeper and the cook. She orders and shops for the food. Um, we get all our food from U.S. food, so it comes in bulk. And she supervises any maintenance people or repairs that need to be done, things like that. Okay, so she's a house mother, but she's got this awesome mother job that you also had a cook and a cleaner in the house? <laughs> Is that correct? Did I hear that right? Yep, that's right. We were spoiled there. <laughs> wow, that sounds awesome. And sometimes she would make us late night snacks or popcorn for our movie nights. Oh, nice. Okay, so you're living in a house, you've got a house mother, although it sounds like you've got all these great people who are taking care of you. What kind of sorority rules were there? Were there rules about overnight guests, noise, lights out, everyone has to go to bed at a certain time? Uh, we had a few rules. We couldn't have guests upstairs. Upstairs is where all the bedrooms were, so nobody that, did, that wasn't a part of Kappa Alpha Theta could go upstairs except for your, your family or something like that. And then there were no guests on the main floor after 2 a.m. And there are quiet hours after 10 p.m. on school nights. So but there's study areas in the house. For instance, the basement is a study area, and that is quiet 24-7. So if you needed to study, there's always a quiet place in the house. And then during finals, it's quiet hours 24-7 throughout the whole house. So it's a, it's a good place to study during finals. Well, I guess you liked it because you became the sorority president in your fourth year and chose to live in the house for your junior and senior year. Yeah, I paid actually the same amount for my junior and senior year, even though in my junior year I shared a room with five other girls and there was three sets of bunk beds in one room. And then the next year I went to having my very own room and it was the same price. So I had a great experience and different experiences each year, but I loved them both. So do you think there were extra expenses with life at the sorority? Um, I think that being in a sorority gives you something to do all of the time, so you're not left with all of this open time where you're filling it up by going to the movies or doing things like that. You're kind of doing things as part of the sorority, so you've already paid for the activities up front. So I think that's a good way to budget your activities because all of your entertainment is paid for at the beginning of the semester. Well, it sounds like you would highly recommend any student to get to know the system on their campus and consider joining and maybe even living in a house. Jordan, I can't thank you enough for taking the time to talk to me about the expenses at college. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're more than welcome. Well, that wraps up another weekly show of College Smart Radio. We hope you picked up some new information today that helps you figure out ways to manage the runaway cost of college. You can hear us each week here on KDOW 1220, Saturdays at 3 p.m. We promise to bring you up-to-date information from the front lines of helping Bay Area parents deal with the most expensive years of their lives. For a link to a podcast of this show and our prior weekly shows, go to our website, www.collegesmartradio.com. You've been listening to College Smart Radio with Certified Financial Planner Beatrice Schultz. If you have a question on today's topic, Log on to collegesmartradio.com or call area code 650-587-1517. That's 650-587-1517. Join us next week at this time for another edition of College Smart Radio 
on AM 1220 KDOW.